folks uh, welcome back to my channel so today I would like to do my second astronomy video and this one should be all about deep sky astrophotography on a budget I think I found a really neat setup that works really well and it's very affordable it was very cheap altogether and I'd like to give you a quick walkthrough how it works what the components are maybe some tricks you should know as a beginner and yeah, let's see what I can do. So the first thing you want to have is a tripod or a mount or something to put your equatorial mount on top. You can even make yourself a, a pillar out of concrete if you have like enough space and you can leave it there. But I'm just going with a really cheap uh, photography standard tripod. Something like this. Um, this works really fine for me and my setup. Um, of course, it's a good idea to get something more stable as well. Also, first step, try to get this thing really like straight, like really level to the ground. One of these things might uh, be some help. So, second component, and this one's really important. Um, you want to have yourself uh, an equatorial mount. There's also alt as mounts or altitude azimuth mounts. They kind of work, but if you find yourself an equatorial one, they're better. Go for the equatorial ones. So what this thing here does, basically, it has two axes. One is this axis. This should face to Polaris, to north, that you really get uh, your polar alignment good. That's a really important thing. And this here will be the axis that moves. This is it's basically a clock. This will turn once uh, in 24 hours. Then you have your second axis to here. And with those two axes you go find your targets. There's a little stepper motor here that turns uh, the first axis. And you'll just get like your little control box and the battery pack for that. So that's the motorized uh, mount setup. Now let's go ahead and uh, put a telescope on top. Something like this. So this is our third step. Um, I'll talk a bit more about the scope later. It's, it's a very affordable model. I got this thing for $110. I think it was a sale, maybe it's $150 normally. But it's a, it's a really good small refractor. It has 400 millimeters focal length and 80 millimeters uh, lens diameter. So for a bit more wide field uh, photos, it's it's awesome. I'm very happy with this scope. But now I'll show you um, how to connect your camera to this. That's the next step. So um, if you want to connect your DSLR camera to one of those telescopes, you'll need one of these T adapters here. So this side connects to your camera. This is a Canon in my case. It has to be compatible with the brand. And on the other side, this is just a 1.25 inch, uh, that's kind of standard eyepiece diameter um, opening. So, connect this here and then you can shove it in uh, the telescope. Just about like that. Maybe one word too, um, if you're new to this field, I didn't know that when I started, but uh, this here is called prime focus mode, if I'm correct. Um, you don't need an eyepiece in between, you really stick the camera directly into the scope, so the telescope is your lens, basically. You don't need any eyepiece here in between. You can do eyepiece projection, but that gets a bit more complicated, and in general, the less glass, the better. If you have, if you put in more and more lenses, you will get some distortion from that. So the less glass, the cleaner your picture is actually. So we're almost ready to shoot. Um, maybe some last little but important things um, you you'll want to have. Um, a remote control um, trigger for the camera. Like this is a Wi-Fi thingy. They're really cheap. You also can just connect it by the cable and like program intervals and stuff. 
you, you really don't want to touch the telescope or the camera while it's making pictures because you will get like shake and the stars will smear out and it's annoying so you, you'll want to have something like this and also very important um, this can be very annoying uh, as a beginner it really like cost me a lot of nerves um, you'll get a problem that's called do it's basically humidity out of the air that collects on your lens and uh, it fogs it up and it's really frustrating if you're like out and you're shooting for hours and hours and then you notice that you're just like shooting do yeah but you can get do heaters this one here is actually for a camera like for a zoom lens or so you just can strap it around and connect it with some USB tank battery whatever and this will keep your lens a little bit warmer than the outside temperature which is optically not that great but yeah do is worse so this helps a lot you you even can make these yourself I'll show you in a minute on my big telescope how to make one yourself the other option if you don't have one yet and I did this a lot in the beginning hair dryer or hot air fan but it's annoying you have to like yeah fog off your lens every half an hour and stuff so it's this thing is a really good investment so let's connect it and then we're ready to shoot so we got our tripod ready or equatorial mount we put the telescope on top we have the camera installed we have the dew heater and now we're ready to shoot um, of course you need good polar alignment uh, I say this again it's really important to get uh, stable um, movement with the motor your stand has to be really uh, straight but yeah we're ready actually like now we just have to wait for night time but actually I think I'll show you some pictures that I made with this setup and in the meantime maybe I'll set up my big telescope as well well this year is Messier 51 also known as the Whirlpool galaxy it's a beautiful galaxy actually it's a double galaxy it's two falling into each other this I made with the small telescope um, just one word uh, before like these images are all stacked which means it's about 100 single frames in this image that I put on top of each other in the software and also quite highly edited in uh, I use GIMP or lately Photoshop essentials just to get out the details uh, to get rid of the noise and stuff I think my editing skills are still uh, quite bad I think I still could improve a lot on those um, this one here is the beautiful Orion Nebula and you also see some of the Running Man Nebula on the right of the picture and these here are the Pleiades or Messier 45 beautiful little uh, star cluster and what else do I have? Oh yeah, this one is really nice. Uh, this is Messier 108 and Messier 97. So 108 up here is a galaxy and Messier 97 is the Owl Nebula on the lower uh, left side. So we have two deep sky objects in one frame. The nebula, however, is inside of our galaxy. This one here I like a lot, even though it's highly edited and the colors are really like false. There, uh, yeah, I messed around a lot with editing here. Sometimes I get the colors quite true, but sometimes I find it a bit difficult. It's a beautiful motif, though um, the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula in Orion. The first one here is Messier 81, also known as Boat's Galaxy. Um, and the second galaxy, it's uh, more on the right side. That's Messier 82 or the Cigar Galaxy. Then I have one more a galaxy picture and this is called the Leo Triplet. So these are three galaxies uh, in the constellation of Leo. They are like really close to each other and also three really different kinds of galaxies. Even though also here I'm not really happy with the editing yet, I think I could do better. And just before I forget it again, uh, since we are the low budget science channel here, I want to talk about the price of the small setup, just for a moment. So 
tripod is from the flea market 10 bucks or so I'll do this in US dollars because this is closest to my currency in my country it's almost the same so in euros it will be a little bit less but uh, yeah you can do those calculations uh, yourself I guess so tripod 10 bucks Orion EQ1 motorized equatorial mount I found on Amazon I think for 150 bucks then the telescope which I didn't talk about much yet it's some newer brand from China they're called SV Bonnie the telescope itself is the SV20 and it's really really good don't uh, like be afraid of the low price I'm very happy with the results you can't expect more for 110 bucks it's it's really good of course the DSLR which I got used the 600D is a really good model for astrophotography I had a 1100D before which I wasn't that happy with it gave me some nice results but the 600D is much better you'll find them around 300 350 bucks used then of course all the small stuff T adapter do heater remote trigger focusing mask I would say about 50 bucks for that which gives me a total of 670 US dollars so we got us a deep sky astrophotography setup you can do galaxies with it for under 700 US dollars I think that's a very good price for uh, the results that I get well this thing here is my big telescope that I'm using uh, a lot lately actually I got this here before I got the small setup but I mostly start with the difficult stuff first and then move to the easy stuff that's just a thing of me I guess but I love this scope it's really awesome I got it used from something like eBay for around $800 more or less it's like 25 30 years old but these models are great it's a Celestron C8 there's also other brands other models that are good but this one is quite a popular one and essentially the whole principle is kind of the same like with the small one there are some differences but um, you have um, you have this axis then you've got the other axis here's the scope from the front back here this here is a two inch adapter but it's also for a Canon DSLR I can mount the camera directly and there's a motor built into the mount it's it's like internal here um, I power the motor with an external battery you can also put a 9 volt inside if you want and let me show you my DIY do heater quick it's basically just this band here that I put around um, this is just like a 25 or 30 resistors that I um, connected together in parallel yep parallel and I hooked it up to my old motorbike battery this works really really good as a do heater for me I'll show you the schematics like right now just a simple drawing and the trick is the resistors just should get warm like they shouldn't get hot otherwise you'll maybe damage your glass so test that out before you put it on the telescope but this works really easy as a do heater also you can get do shields they kind of help you can just strap this around the front like something like this and if you use both together you should be really do free I am at least so for me it works really good then there's one more thing I forgot to talk about well essentially I talked about this in my last uh, my first astronomy video focusing masks or a Wachintov mask I always mispronounce it I'm sorry for that but um, wait a sec oh, yeah. there's also small ones this is for the big scope, this is for the small scope. So before you start shooting, you just want to put this up here, like have it centered. Go to a really bright star, do your focusing. Check my other video if you want to see exactly how that works. So that's an essential part too. And something I forgot to talk about um, is balance. On this here, we have this big heavy weight. The idea of this is if like you have your scope like this, for example, you rock, you just want this axe to be this axis to be balanced, that the motor doesn't have to like work too hard. 
Yeah, I'm hitting the motor here now. This thing has the same thing as well. It works a little bit different. You, you get these balances here, you can like take them apart and screw them onto down here. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing. You, you really want to have it in balance, that the motor doesn't have to work too hard. Let's take a look at some pictures that I did with the big telescope, the Celestron C8. Um, the first one here is, it's actually my first really good deep sky image that I ever made. It's a M57, the Ring Nebula, or also known as the Space Donut, as I like to call it. Then my first successful galaxy was M81, Bode's Galaxy. Here also you, you see the difference between the field of views, like uh, I showed you the picture of M81 and the M82 before with the small telescope that has a bigger field of view. The big telescope however has a much smaller field of view which gives you more magnification um, obviously. So you can go more into detail into like a single object uh, with one of those big telescopes. Then I also have the Whirlpool Galaxy that I did also with the small telescope, just to show you the difference. This is one of my favorite photos till now, I really like this one. And I also can show you M Messier 101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. I'm not really happy with this one yet, I, I lost quite a bit of the outer uh, spiral arms, but um, I still can get myself more images and stack them together with the old ones that I have. I just have to do the setup like really the same. And also just really quick about stacking and about image editing. I think I'm just not really good at that stuff yet. I'm still really learning a lot. That's why I don't want to give you a tutori tutorial on how that works. I think there's other people that can do that better. But just to compare. I'll show you a single shot of uh, Messi 81 of Bode's Galaxy. So this is a single shot with the DSLR. This is maybe 45 seconds or one minute through the big telescope. You hardly see anything. There's no galaxy there. There's just, just some smudges and like a lot of stars. The trick is to get about 100 or like the more the better fo single photos like this then you can throw it all into a software. I use Deep Sky Stacker, put some links in the description as well. Deep Sky Stacker is freeware, it's amazing, it's, it's a really good software. So might as well throw some box in their hat too. I think they have like some kind of a PayPal where you can like give them something if you want to. I will because it's awesome and I love this program. And yeah, out of Deep Sky Stacker you'll get a much more clean picture with, where all your 100 pictures are stacked on top of each other. And then you can go edit this further in uh, Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you like to use. These two images are actually two of my favorites. Um, this is the moon through the big telescope. And this is not even really cropped, it, basically the moon fills my field of view, so that's how small the field of view of the big scope is actually. So I think that's it for uh, this video, um, thank you for watching. I hope I could help out some fellow uh, amateur astronomers maybe to get started, maybe some other tricks. It's a really cool hobby and the learning curve is really, really extreme for me at least. Like I started eight or nine months ago with the big scope and like maybe two or three months ago with the small scope. And I'm really like improving every night that I go out, I get better results and it, it's a lot of fun. And you can make really beautiful pictures. You can go after galaxies and like how awesome is that? Yeah. It's a great hobby. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching and see you soon uh, for, for the videos. Bye.